Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on our 148 tactic project. Uh, I'm moving on to terrain. Uh, now, the, this is going to be done a little bit differently than what I did the individual uh, models you know, the individual soldiers. Uh, this is the terrain. And I plan to do the terrain all in one video or maybe one color at a time. And uh, we'll only break it up if I find that the video is taking a long amount of time. Like if it's a two-hour video, I'll probably break it up. All right. So let's talk about the terrain pieces, first of all. First of all, the terrain pieces are all resin. Okay, and these come directly from Boeta, uh, 148 Tactic. Uh, they're 40, 148 scale. So if you have 148 scale miniatures or if you have 148 scale model kits, these will work fine for that. Uh, now, I've primed these initially with three different colors, and I got them right here. The green ones you see here, I primed with satin Italian olive. So it's like a it's like an olive green, but it's a little just slightly off. But uh, this is great for World War II. Um, it's not olive drab; it's just olive. Okay, that's what those were primed with. And then I have two browns. Uh, I was shooting for um, like a a true wood color, uh, not a bark, but the wood underneath. Um, I probably could have gone a little bit lighter. Than this but so what I did was I experimented and I painted half of these with dark taupe okay and that's these guys over here uh, these six are all dark taupe um, from Rust-Oleum and then these over here were painted with a nutmeg which came out a little bit darker, actually. I thought the lid was lighter, but it actually came out darker. Uh, yeah, Rust-Oleum Nutmeg. Nutmeg's great for, like, horses as well. Okay, uh, and then the final piece right here, uh, I don't have the spray can over here, but what I did was I sprayed this with testers, uh, mustard brown, mustard color. Okay, so this is uh, German, you know, the mustard and set that off to the side there. Now, this model I'm going to do as, a, as a, a separate video. It's going to be start to finish on this model. So this model is not going to be done during this, uh, this vi these videos. Okay. All right, now, after I primed them. They didn't come out like this. Once I primed them, then I took Quick Shades Military Shader, a uh, little bit of water, maybe maybe 20% water, like 10 drops uh, shader, 2 drops water kind of thing. Mixed it up and I put it on the green uh, oil, you know, the jerry cans and uh, it got down into all these little cracks, gave the, uh, it gave the uh, separation of the gaps a little bit of definition. Uh, that's what I wanted for that. And I also used the military shader over this entire thing here because I noticed that this donut, as opposed to all these others, this donut was mostly made out of boxes military crates and things like that so I want so I just went ahead and did this whole thing in green uh, not everything's going to be green obviously but uh, the majority of it was so we went ahead and did the military shader on that as well okay put that away all right now the next wash that I did was a mid brown wash some of these I did with pure mid brown no water. Some I did with 50% water, and some I did with various uh, degrees of water. I was experimenting as I went ahead and did these. Uh, no re really rhyme or reason. One of the reasons why I did it that way was I didn't want it to be consistent. I wanted it to be 
a little bit different for all these different uh, pieces because I wanted the pieces to be to be unique. So you can see how that like if this was the primer color, this was the with the wash on top of it, right? How it darkened it up. Uh, there's some stones there I'm gonna have to paint. Okay. And I and then when I went to do the wash, I only put it on the wood pieces, not the sandbags or the bags or the dirt or any of that. I just put it on the, the, the hard cover that someone had put down to protect uh, themselves. Same thing with this. I didn't put it, okay, well I did on this side because there's wood on this side, but not, I didn't wash every, the whole model. I only washed the wood portions of the model. Now on the ones with the sandbags, I only washed the wood side of the sandbags. This guy, it really made some definition in the wood. I'm real. I really like the way this piece came out. We're not done yet, obviously. Okay, and then over here with that dark taupe, uh, it looks a lot lighter, uh, almost a gray color, which I'm okay with that. And then I, because I'm going to go over this with another color, and there's like a piece of corrugated aluminum or whatever that is. Uh, so I washed all the wood so that all the cracks and crevices would have like that dark wood color. Same thing with these donuts. I only washed the wood. All right, now uh, now that we got that out of the way. All right, now uh, just something I wanted to point out to you. When you're doing your terrain, whatever it is, you want to pay attention to it because your terrain models are models they are on the table they are what bring your terrain to life don't use you know don't just forget about them or not pay attention to them uh okay so we're starting off with wood right a wood color and this is where the not bark wood is And you notice I used a large brush because usually, this is a two brush, uh, usually terrain is a, have large areas that need to be painted. Now there is a possibility that we will paint this and then have to apply like a wash to it afterwards because uh, the initial wash was mainly for the shadows okay and that's the end now we're going down to the other end which is a little bit unique so here let me let me see if i can And I really do like the way that Boeda modeled the end of these. It's like a lumberjack took an axe to them. And they're cut like you would see a twig that was cut by a lumberjack. It's, it's pretty impressive, actually. Okay, now this... Let me scratch my head. All right, now this log here looks like the bark has actually been stripped off all the way back to here and that's what we are going to be painting anything that is not bark covered Kind of like that and I don't see that anywhere else but I do see it like 
on this twig. I guess it was a branch at one point, right? The tops of these. Okay, it looks like the bark was taken off of here. I think you understand the effect that I'm going for. Bark looks like it was taken off of there. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the wood. Now we're going to set that off to the side now. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to do with the majority of these models. But stick around. Now when it comes to the wood planking and stuff, it's the whole thing. Also, when it comes to wood, I like to paint with the grain, if I can. And if any of the underbrown is showing through, uh, it's not too bad because you want it, I mean, you primed it brown initially just for that reason. Okay, now these look like boxes, so I think I'm going to paint them green uh, and that box inside as well. But these planks, these are all going to be wood. Kind of like that. Keep going.
Okay, and then you get kind of a wood look like that. Let's go ahead and set that off to the side and move on to the next piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of these pieces and then I'm going to come back and kind of show you uh, what they looked like after I painted them. Okay, so now that we got the wood on there and you can kind of see that once it starts to dry, it really is kind of subdued. So you don't really, it, it's not too um, bold and in your face. Even on that, it's really not. So, and then here we go, the ends where I dabbed it on. Okay, that looks really good. All right, so the next color we're going to do is we're going to do the sandbags because there's a lot of these terrain pieces have sandbags on them. Specifically that one. Oh, it's got a lot of sandbags. So I thought about using field drab. But it needs to be a little bit more khaki, a little dark, a little brown, but more khaki. And I dis discovered I had this color right here. It's called Hammerfell Khaki from P3. It's the perfect color. So we're going to use that. All right, now we're not painting. I shouldn't say we're not completely 100% covering the sandbags. We're just almost like highlighting. We're just going to put it over the majority of it. And we're going to paint pretty much each individual sandbag, kind of just like that. Leaving, leaving a little of the dark brown around the edges for highlighting or for, yeah, for highlighting. Kind of like that. Mainly, we're just giving the sandbags a contrast in color than the primer. And we're covering any of the wash that might have just made it look dingy on the top. All right, and there's that sandbag sitting in front of the position. Couple of sandbags over here. And also remember that in World War II, sandbags were not green. A lot of people think that green is the color. Well, that's more of a modern color. In World War II, they were more of a khaki color. Full khaki is like the perfect color. If you don't have it, I recommend getting it. OK, 
Okay, now that is not a sandbag, so I'm not painting it that color. Yeah, so the sandbags each have their own individual color like that. All right, so let me go ahead and get the sandbags on the smaller pieces done, and then we'll be back to do the large pieces. All right, so now we're going to move on to the large pieces with the larger amount of sandbags. Uh, I'm just going to do this one on camera, and then I'll do the other ones off camera. But basically the same thing. We're going to start at the top. Uh, this is an out to in technique. So a lot of times you'll want to paint from the inside and then work your way out. But not when this, not, not like this. Okay. Because this forces you to pay attention and not paint things that don't need to be painted. comes to the side you want to hit just the same bag All right. now on this one you can see there's a couple of sandbags tucked underneath where you want to hit those as well giving them highlights And you're not going all the way to the edge. You're not going, you're letting the wash that you did in a previous step keep the shadows, stay in the shadows. Now on this model there is dirt that sits on top of some of these bags. That's okay if you paint it because you're going to go back and paint the dirt. Okay. I want to flip it around because there's a lot more on this side. Okay. You can see how I'm doing one bag at a time. Working my way down. Some people would say, just dry brush it. 
Well, dry brushing is a little bit less precise and it tends to leave streaks. see the shadows. All right, we got these bags colored. Uh, okay, and that's what I'm going to do on these other ones so when I get done with all of them then we'll be back all right so we got the sandbags here on the little short wall three inch wall then we got sandbags here on the seven inch you can kind of see the brown in between the sandbags giving it a little bit de definition you can definitely see the individual bags as well as this one. All right. All right, next color we're going to use is the German Army Gray Green. Uh, it's actually, uh, what I'm going to use it for is the tarps and the, um, any canvas that is on any of these bases. specifically that one primarily right so let's go ahead and paint this tarp a gray green now uh german army gray green in my opinion it could be used for americans as well it could be german uh the run, one reason why i say that is because it's kind of like just a green tarp a military shaded green tarp that maybe has faded over time or the weather has gotten to it you know what i mean and so, so gray green could be German because it is a German camouflage color, but it's also, in my opinion, like an, a faded OD. So, and who knows, this might have been a civilian's tarp on this log pile. So maybe it's not a military tarp. It could be any color, really. You could paint it bright red if you wanted. Except uh, bright red is probably not a tarp color in World War II. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> I'd have to do some research on that. Okay, I didn't put enough on there. If your paint is a little too thick, just add a little bit of water and it'll flow a lot smoother. Uh, the downside is it is thinner that way, so you got to be careful not to put too much water because then it'll either be runny or it won't cover the undercoat. 
and if you do put too much water you can always add a little bit more paint or just do a second coat let it dry a little bit and then go back over it and do a second coat okay but right now we're just painting the tarp All right, when I get this tarp painted and the other canvas pieces painted, I'll be right back. All right, so now I got my canvas items done. Like uh, that's the only piece on this that was like that. Um, on this wood pile, that was the only piece that was like that. Uh, the canvas on the log pile, and the big one was on this. I need a couple of bags here. I had to paint right and then uh, there is a tarp sitting on top of this box and this barrel and then uh, there's another folded tarp over here so that was interesting all right so we're going to move on to the next color here all right now the next color we're going to do is a model master olive drab which is a little bit lighter maybe a little bit more gray than the Tamaya Olive Drab. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Model Master Olive Drab to paint the boxes. Okay, so we got some boxes over here that um, I feel the need to touch them up. Now remember, these are wooden boxes. Now that box there looks like it's metal, so I'm going to use the Tamaya Olive Drab on any metal Olive Drab items. If that makes sense. All right. That'll give a little distinction between wooden and metallic. Plus, I having been in the service I think there was a a color difference between our wooden gear and our metal gear maybe because it absorbs the paint or I don't know And again, a lot like the wood, I'm just going quickly hitting the raised areas and leaving the wash to kind of show off the highlights. Okay. 
fun though. Yep, those are all wood as well. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because the base coat was green and there's a wash. So it'll be like a four-tone effect. It'll actually look really cool once it dries. Oh, let me get the faces. Now the reason why I'm doing these in olive drab and not like a field gray color or just a brown wood color like the Germans would use uh, because all the gear on this base are, is all American gear. I see an M1 Garand. I see like a machine gun ammo pouch. I see a American rucksack over here. I see, but then again, I see a German ammo pouch a German, uh, a German uh, gas mask case, and I also see like a German mess kit. So it could really, I guess it could go either way. All right, so we got the olive drab, the grayish olive drab. It's not an olive gray. It says olive drab on there. Okay, let me see if I've got any other wooden boxes that need olive drab. Yeah, like these two front boxes here. And then there's that box right down inside there. That you can barely see. Okay. And this box looks metal. So I'm going to paint that with the dark olive. Just going around my different, ah, here we go. There's a box right there. We're going to set that one down. All right, so now the next color we're going to do is the Tamaya Olive Drab. And remember, we're going to put that on the metallic pieces um, that are supposed to be Olive Drab or that I want to be Olive Drab, like the barrel. So i got to get underneath the tarp and paint this barrel. without painting the tarp. That 
That's awesome. And that is awesome as well. Okay, so now we've got a metal box here. a little bit of the metal box showing on the inside okay let's give that just a little bit more love okay so you can see the barrel and the canister uh, crate I guess okay I don't think there is any other piece that has a metal... Oh, wait, there is. This box right here I wanted to do in the dark olive as well. And again, it's okay to paint the ground. Like if you have dirt right there or whatever and you accidentally paint the dirt, it's okay because you're going to be, well, at least I'm going to be, repainting the dirt. Okay, and that's going to look good when it dries. All right, now there's something I wanted to do with this. I wanted to do a test run on some of these canisters uh, just to see what happens when I do this. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to do that because that's the right color. And again, I'm only painting the ends. I'm not letting it get down inside the cracks because the dark green wash is in there. And then I want to do a drag across the top here just to touch. Yep, it's looking good. And you see those wash spots that are under the paint I'm applying right now? Shining through the paint. That's perfect. That's Those are good like oil stains, gas stains. Those could be... Because this isn't water, this is gas. Gasoline. <clears throat> and then drag across the top, give them a dark color as well. Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay. Yeah, I think the Tamaya Olive Drab is like the best Olive Drab out of all the different brands that I've seen. No, Tester's Spray Olive Drab is, is this color, so Tester's would probably have a, a good Olive Drab too. Possibly.
So the Italian olive is a really good base coat, but you just can't leave it that color. That's not the that's not the right olive color. I mean, you could leave it that color, but it would be wrong or it would be faded or something. I don't know. Okay, so we got all sides except for this top. I think the wife is home. That looks real. Whoops. That looks really good. We're going to set that off to the side, let that dry as well. So, yeah, I think I've got all my boxes. All right, guys, now we're going to come back to a pretty big step here. This, what we're going to use now is we're going to use uh, Folk Arts Real Brown, and we're going to use that to darken up the, uh, what do you call it, the, the bark. Okay, come on. All right, now, <clears throat> now I used, or I'm using, a Citadel tank brush. I very rarely ever use the Citadel tank brush because I pretty much only use it on terrain. Uh, now, as you can see, I've already started uh, with the, turn this chair up a little bit. I've already started. This was the, the bottom layer, would have been the original color. And then this is with the real brown actually being added. Now I'm trying to do like what I always call a wet brush, which I will dip my brush in the paint and then I will wipe up the majority of it into the palette. Uh, and then we will brush it on uh, like dry brushing but without wiping the majority of it off uh, avoiding the parts that are supposed to be the light wood color and here you can see a big contrast there as well okay so let's get some paint in the bristles squish most of this paint out of the brush not all of it and then I'm going cross grain. Just trying to highlight really the top parts of the bark. And then Yeah, kind of like that. Let that dry, it'll show up. Okay. This is another one that needs that. Uh, less so because of the way the primer and the wash works really well together. Whoa. So really, we're just going to
just highlight a little bit. Avoiding the tarp, of course. There we go. Darkened it up quite a bit. All right, let that dry off to the side. All right, now on this one, you can kind of see how it's kind of a very white. Um, yeah. So we're just trying to darken it up a little bit. The stump. There's a little piece of wood right there and needs a little coating, a little covering. All right. All right, all right, all right. That looks good. Okay. So let's... I'm going to continue on with the wood and then I'll be back. for the next color.
All right, now I'm just gonna paint some minor details specifically on this guy. Uh, and I'm gonna use khaki for the majority of the gear. So I'm just gonna put a drop of khaki in there. Uh, this is khaki from Model Color. And there's not a whole lot that needs to be painted, but I am gonna get like the ammo pouch. This looks like MP40 or Thompson ammo pouches, but I think they're MP40s actually. And then I'm gonna paint the uh, rucksack. Khaki. And I'm going to paint this tarp on the left side khaki as well. I originally had thought to paint it the German green gray, but that wound up looking too close to the OD that I painted the boxes. And so I wanted there to be a little bit more contrast. So we're going with a khaki on that guy. All right. Um, I think that's all that's going to be khaki. On that, take a look at anything else. Nope. All right, we'll move on to the next color.